Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today I wanted to discuss iCloud Drive but specifically on your iPhone or iPad. Here we go. In this video, I wanted to cover the understanding what iCloud Drive is and how it relates to the iPhone and iPad that you may have. The iPhone and iPad are very, very similar. So everything that I show on the iPad is going to be pretty much identical to what you would see on your phone. It's just a larger screen. Now I did another video that covers iCloud Drive that ties into a computer. There's additional syncing settings for your desktop and document folders, and there's some nuances between the two. But keep in mind for an iPhone or iPad, you don't have those options because it's only this device and you may not even have a computer. iCloud Drive, what is it? It's just storage in the cloud that gives you access to store certain files and the ability to access your files from other devices if you need to. Is it a backup? Not necessarily. I guess it depends on the scenario and the what if. If you were synchronizing like files or pages, documents or PDFs and you lost or broke your phone, well, in theory, if you can't recover it physically on there, it's in the cloud. So that's, I guess you could consider that a backup, but the purpose of iCloud Drive and other cloud solutions like OneDrive or Google Drive are really designed to synchronize your content amongst multiple devices. So let's see where iCloud Drive is, how to use it and what I can do with it. So the first thing is you need to go into your settings and in your settings, you're gonna to go to your first category for Apple ID, iCloud, Media and Purchases. This shows you all of your iCloud settings that you have. And if we go to iCloud here and select select that, this gives you at the very top a visual graph of the storage. Now on your phone, you're gonna see the same thing. As we scroll down, you have a category that says iCloud Drive, and it's honestly just a toggle switch. You're either turning it on or turning it off. You're giving the ability to synchronize and have these files in the cloud, or if it's turned off, everything is only physically stored on here. With that being said, when you use iCloud Drive, if you store a lot of files, you have to make sure that you have enough cloud storage to accommodate that. Apple only gives you five gigabytes free, which is my opinion, it's a bit useless, but you can purchase additional storage. I'll link another video that explains how to do that. Now, once iCloud Drive is turned on here, it's a question of, well, how do I use it and where is it? The thing is, iCloud Drive is in an app called Files. So if we locate files on your iPad, swipe down and type in files, or if you know where it's at, you can find it. But if I touch files here, this is where it shows me all of my files and the different locations of where I can manage and organize and store these files. So over here on the left-hand side, this is my sidebar. This shows me the locations of where files are at. In the top left, if I touch this button, it's just simply gonna hide that menu and I can touch it again to bring it back. It's broken into the different categories. I have recents, I have shared files, I have locations of iCloud Drive, on my iPad and any other ones there, you may actually not see if you use different services. For example, if I touch the little dots in the top, it gives me options to scan the documents, connect to server or edit sidebar. If I choose edit sidebar, it actually gives me other cloud apps that I have on my iPad or phone that I can connect to. So if you are a Google Drive user, if you're a creative cloud user for Adobe, you can actually toggle these on. So here, if I toggled on Amazon Drive, and then choose done, Amazon Drive now shows up as an option and if I touch this, I'll be able to see all of the content that I have stored in Amazon in addition to things that are in my iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, or the DS file is actually connected to my network attached storage here in my house. So files is much more than just iCloud Drive. It's actually a, a, an app that allows you to organize and manage your files amongst multiple different systems that you may possibly use. Now underneath the locations, you just have your favorites. So this can be customized. I just have my personal files here, application icons, and then downloads, things that if I went to a website and downloaded something, it would download and save it here as the default 
default location. And then you can also organize and tag files by color. And I do it sometimes, but not very much. Probably use that more often, but I don't. Let's go back to iCloud Drive. When I select iCloud Drive on the left-hand side, in the main window here, I have the ability to just browse everything that I have stored in that cloud environment. Now there's different ways to view this. If I touch the little lines in the top right between that little folder icon and select, this gives me the ability to change the view of how I see my files. So I could choose icons, I could select that again, I could choose list, select it again, choose columns, and then underneath that, based off of visually how I see it, gives me the ability to sort it in different ways. Let's go back to icons, and then we can go back and choose by the name. So it's gonna quickly organize and, and visually show me in alphabetical order versus the kind of file it is. And I can scroll down and I could say use groups. So then it's gonna group it by folders and then images and so on and so forth. So you can kind of tweak this any way that you want as far as how you want to view your files. I personally like the icons. I usually don't use the sort groups and because I like to see everything as is. Now if I wanted to create a brand new folder in here, I could click the little folder icon and then it gives me a brand new folder and I can say iCloud folder of stuff. So now I have this folder called iCloud folder of stuff and there's nothing in there. So the next part is, well, what can or what should you put in there? iCloud Drive is more about documents that you may create. If you have Microsoft Word on your iPad, if you have pages on your iPad, it's different ways to organize the files that you create. Now sure, you can put photographs in here, but naturally on the iPhone or iPad, when you take a picture, it's going to go into the Photos app versus iCloud Drive. These really only show up here because I synchronize this with my computers at home. Therefore, I have a bit more that I see here because it shows my desktop and my documents and some of these other apps that you see here that if you just have an iPhone or an iPad, you're actually not going to see at all. Now let's say I did want to put a photograph here for some reason. If I exit out of there and go into my photos, we'll do this picture here. We're going to go to the share button in the top right. And then up at the top here, I had the ability to save to files. So this gives me the option to save this picture to files. And when I do that, notice it brings up the whole file structure of asking me, where do I want to place that picture? So I could just say iCloud Drive in general, and it's going to put it right there or I can say on my iPad, which is physically only on this iPad, or I could say Microsoft OneDrive, which is gonna go out to that cloud ecosystem there. I wanna do iCloud Drive and I'm just gonna do save. And what's gonna happen here is if we go back to files, it's going to just put it in the main category, the, the parent bucket at the very beginning that collects everything. And here it is right there. Is there a reason to put a photograph here? Not necessarily, unless you needed to share it a different way with someone, which you can still do in the Photos app. So I don't really see a huge benefit to storing photos here. This is really gonna be more for your Pages documents, your Word documents, your Excel documents. As you can see, some of these other apps that have icons on it, like the Pages, Music Memos, the Pixelmator. If you have other apps on your iPhone or iPad, third-party apps, it will often save the content that you create in those apps within iCloud Drive. And so that's what it's showing me here. So if I went to pages, this is gonna show me all of my pages documents as well as Word documents. Now, because this does synchronize with my computer, I do have the ability to organize everything on my computer quicker than I can on here, and it will reflect an update on my iPad, but you can still do some organization here. I have a folder called personal files, and if I wanted to drag this picture into there, I could touch and hold, and I could drag it directly to personal files, and now that photograph is inside of here with everything else. If I touch iCloud Drive, it brings me back to the, the main menu. Now, one thing to note is if I try and do the same thing with this photograph here, and go into pages, it's not going to work. Notice the little icon that shows up. Notice how it has a little circle there with the, the line through it, because this special folder only wants pages or Word documents or similar files located in there. So I can't put a photo in there, I can't put a movie in there. Same thing with the numbers, Keynote. So really iCloud Drive is just a location to save your files. If you wanted to delete a file, touch and hold, and it'll bring up all of these options here, or you can touch select in the top right, 
And if I select this item, I now have all these different options at the bottom to say share, duplicate, move, delete, or if I touch more, it's gonna bring up all the other options of what I can do with this particular file that's selected. So if I wanted to delete this file, I could just touch delete, and it goes into the recently deleted over here on the left, and it's going to remain there for 30 days until iCloud gets rid of it permanently. So just be aware that if you accidentally delete something and don't see it in your iCloud drive, you only have a little less than a month to actually go back and get that file. So because it was recently deleted, I can always put it back either by touching and holding on it, and it gives me the options to download, get information, copy it, or recover, or I can always touch select in the top right, and then choose recover all or delete all on the bottom if there were multiple items or I can just select this one item and choose recover and it's going to put that file back into iCloud Drive where it was initially. So that's kind of what happens if you delete a file out of there. Now sometimes you may be on a website or someone sends you a link to a document or anything like that. All of those can be saved either physically to the iPad or iPhone itself or you can go to iCloud Drive or other locations. So for example, let's pull up my text messages here. I'm going to go to to my wife's we're going to select up here and scroll down and this is where I have the ability to see any files that she sent me so for example here's a map that she sent me a PDF document I want to save this from my text messages into iCloud Drive so that I have it saved and I know exactly where it's at and I can pull it up from different locations. So when I open this map up from the text messages on my iPad, if I touch in the top right, this gives me the option to share this file. If I scroll down, I wanna say save to files. And when I do that, it's going to say, what do you wanna call it and where do you wanna put it? If I touch the little triangle here, I can close iCloud Drive and I have the ability to save either to my iPad or OneDrive or any other locations that I eventually add to there. But I wanna store it to my iCloud and I'm gonna actually choose documents and I'm gonna create a folder called travel. So I'm gonna to touch the folder icon and we're gonna type in travel and touch done. So now I've created a folder inside of my documents folder and I wanna rename this file. So I'm gonna to touch in the top center here where it has this long name of what this PDF is. And I believe this is a Scottsdale map, Arizona. And we're gonna choose done in the top right. I'm gonna choose save in the top right. So now that file, if I choose done here and we exit out of messages and go back to files, we should now have a brand new folder called travel inside of our documents folder and that PDF should be there. So if we go to documents, here's our travel and here is our PDF document. If I go to my computer or my iPhone, it's gonna be the same exact location. So let's pull up my computer here. If I go to the finder and I choose iCloud Drive, Notice it shows me a little progress that it's syncing here because something just happened. So it's probably actually downloading and showing that file. So let's go to documents and here's the travel and here is that Scottsdale map. Now notice the little icon, it's got the little cloud icon with the downward arrow. This means that that file isn't fully downloaded to my computer and if I just double click on it, it's going to download it right now and then open it up. Otherwise, it just kind of saves it there visually to let me know that it exists, but it actually doesn't save to my computer unless I initiate it because it's designed to save space on this device. So now that file is here and I could even choose markup. Let's just add a few different things and say, let's go here. I wanna visit this place here, visit this place. And we're just marking up this PDF really quick because now if I save this file, it's going to resave back to iCloud. And if I touch done back on my iPad, let it refresh and open it back up again, those changes have actually taken place. So it's a really nice way to have access to your files in multiple different locations and be able to modify and have it synchronize from one location to another. So we can touch back. If I wanna add that folder as a favorite because we use it often, I'm just gonna touch and hold on it and it's gonna bring up all the different categories and I'm gonna choose favorite. And then it's gonna show up on the left-hand side as a favorite item within my iCloud Drive on my iPad. If I like to color code things, I can touch and hold and we can say, let's tag this and we'll do it as purple. So now it's purple, I'll touch off of that. It puts a little purple dot next to it and if I scroll down and go to purple, it's gonna show me that folder. So that gives you an example of how you can 
organize files and folders based off of different tag colors. So just like we saved previously from a file from a text message, if you come across a website that has a PDF or a file that you can save from the website, the process is pretty much the same. So if we go to Safari here, I'm just gonna do PDF menu and it pulls up all of these different files. Notice when I scroll and do a search for that, notice next to the Panera one, it says PDF. This will actually identify that this website actually has a PDF document. And so if I scroll here, it's showing the, the menu, but in the top right, if I touch the share button, I can scroll down and it gives me an option to save to files. So if I touch that, it brings me literally back to iCloud Drive and all the organization. So I can touch at the top center, we can relabel this and say, Panera, it looks like it's 2022 winter menu, choose done, and I can choose where to save it. Well, maybe I wanna create a new folder and put it in the on my desktop, and we're gonna say this is food menus, touch done, and then choose save. So now this file got created in files on my desktop, and it put it into a folder called food menus. If I go back to my computer here, Let's close out the Scottsdale menu and notice right here on my desktop, I have food menus and here is that file right there. Now, if you don't have a, an Apple computer, then bypass this whole process. But even if you have an iPhone and an iPad, all of that would show up there. So let's pull out my phone here. Let's open up files and notice the favorites updated. I now see the travel and if we actually go to the tags, let's see if the option for purple is there and it is there. Now if we go to iCloud Drive, and we go to Desktop, and we go to Food Menus, here's that PDF right there. So just remember that the whole purpose of iCloud Drive is to store files that you create from some particular app in this cloud environment so that you can access it from other devices and just make it a little bit more convenient. For example, I have a Pages folder here that holds all of my Pages documents, but if we're inside of here, this is just the organization. This is just the filing cabinet. If I wanna create a pages document, I need to actually exit out of here, go into pages on my iPad, and notice that when I do that, it actually looks very similar to files that we saw. Notice it's got the same sidebar on the left because it's accessing the same information. But the difference is, in the top right, I have a plus sign that gives me the ability to create a new pages document. So I have all these different options across the top, all of these templates. We're just gonna do fun random one, flyer and poster, and say found dog. So we'll create a pages document here. You can rename this dog poster, change the size of it. Now, if I save this, because I created this in pages on my iPad, it automatically defaulted to save into pages. So if I touch documents in the top left, it shows up under recent, but if I go to iCloud Drive on the left and I scroll across to pages, touch that, there it shows as a document. I can customize how I see my files. Back to the top right, I can choose to do icons or lists or columns, I can choose to use groups or not. And if we exit out of here and go back to files, back in iCloud Drive, inside of the pages folder, here is that lost and found flyer. Now, let's say I don't want it in this pages folder, I can always move it someplace else. Remember that folder that we created at the beginning? Well, I could touch select here, and I could select this file, and I could go down to the bottom and say move this, and I wanna put it in a different place. And let's put it in the iCloud folder of stuff. So if I touch that and touch move, it now took it out of that one folder and put it in that folder that we previously created. There it is, iCloud folder of stuff, and here we go. So now if I touch this, it's actually gonna bring me back to pages and open it up to continue editing. And that goes with any of the apps and files and folders on here. If we go into files, and we go back to iCloud Drive. If we do GarageBand for iOS, I have no idea what these songs are. Now it brings us into GarageBand, and here's this file that we could potentially continue working on, which clearly I did nothing in there. If you ever notice in the very, very top left, it says the previous application that you were in. So if I actually touch files in the top left, it just quickly brings me back to files where I was at on the iPad. Now, here's actually another thing I forgot to mention. There's one more thing, one more thing, like Steve Jobs would say, one more thing. A lot of people, I think, don't either realize or didn't know that they could do or possibly forgot. There's some really nice tools on the market that allow you to actually use 
a external hard drive or a flash drive connected to your iPhone or iPad. I will link these in below. There's actually a handful of them that I have. SanDisk has a couple different flavors that connect from USB, USB-C, or USB to lightning adapters so that you can plug these directly into your iPhone or iPad, depending on the connection that you have, but then also give you the flexibility to plug into a computer. So here's how it works. If I take this flash drive here and plug it into the port on my iPad, it's actually going to mount it just like an external hard drive on your computer. So notice on the left here under files, it shows up as flash iOS because that's what I named it on the computer. And it gives me the ability to copy or move anything from this flash drive to my iPad or from the iPad to this flash drive. So if I went to iCloud Drive, I could select these three pictures and I could say move we don't want it to iCloud Drive. We want to go to Flash iOS and choose copy. So now it's going to copy these three photographs to this flash drive. How cool is that? So we can see the little progress in the top right here, the little circle. We can touch that to get an estimate of how long it's going to take. Now keep in mind, if some of these files are in iCloud Drive, it's got to download them first and then copy them to the external flash drive. And I guess really when you're dealing with an external drive, it's not going to necessarily move it. It's always going to copy it. So it's in both locations. So now to eject it, you really just pull the plug. If I un plug this it disappears on the left hand side so now I can actually take this to my Mac we'll go ahead and plug it in and notice it pops up on my desktop yes it's a, got a little flash icon if you're wondering about how to customize the icons and folders of items on your Mac I'll link a video down below and post it up here but now if I double click on this I see all of those images here and if I wanted to copy all of these files bring it back to this flash drive, we'll even put this video file here. Let's see how that works. And again, taking a little bit longer because these files that were on my desktop weren't naturally downloaded. It had to grab them from iCloud Drive to download them, and now it's gotta copy them to the flash drive. So now, I'm gonna eject this flash drive, and I can either right click on it and choose eject, or I can drag to the trash, or do a keyboard shortcut. 10 different ways to do the same thing. Plug it back into my iPad, touch flash iOS on the left, and here are those files that are there. So if I touch one of these, it's gonna open right up. There's Lisa and I. We'll see how the video reacts. There it is, hello video. Cool. And let me take a moment to populate the thumbnails. So you get the idea. Now, if I go into photos on my iPad and I go to the library, I can always scroll through some of these pictures and let's say I select some of these. Ooh, we had crab in Florida. It was so delicious. But here we are, the kids eating ice cream. So we'll just copy a handful of these pictures. So if I have these selected, I can go to the share button and I can choose save to files. So it will download, I can choose save. And so now it's going to copy those pictures from the Photos app to this external flash drive that I have. So now if we exit out of here, we go back to files choose Flash iOS, there are those pictures right there. Now, I bet you're wondering, well, what if I have a bigger external hard drive? Well, let's take a look. Let's go ahead and unplug that flash drive, and let's plug in this big flash drive, or really external hard drive, we'll plug that in. And just like you would expect, here it is. So this hard drive is called YouTube, and this has all of the files and folders that I have that I use for my computer. So in a pinch, you can always, if you're traveling around and you need to save some files off your iPhone or iPad, you can actually connect an external hard drive to your iPhone or iPad and copy items off of there. I don't know how we got off on that tangent, uh, but long story short, yes, you can actually plug in a external hard drive and or flash drive to your iPhone or iPad and save files that way. So if you enjoyed this video, click that little like button. If you learned something and you wanna learn more, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.